Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. This week we'll be staying on the topic of Bloodborne. I understand that some of you may be eager to return to Dark Souls, but with less than two weeks to go until the DLC releases, I think it might be best to get a few more Bloodborne videos in beforehand. I'll most likely be talking about nothing but Dark Souls for a while afterwards the release of Ashes of Ariandel anyway. With all that out of the way, let's jump right in. Bloodborne is full of tragic figures, but the one that stands chief among them all may be Ludwig, Holy Blade of the Church, who would go on later to adopt the title of Ludwig the Accursed. It may be hard to believe that this disfigured, grotesque monster was once a man like any other, but he was, and his name is etched in legend. I'm sure that the topic of Ludwig has been covered in the past, but I would like to inject my own perspective regardless to see what other hidden details we can unearth. Let's begin by looking at Ludwig's Holy Blade. A trick weapon typically used by healing church hunters. It is said that the silver sword was employed by Ludwig, the first hunter of the church. When transformed, it combines with its sheath to form a greatsword. It exhibits several departures from the workshop's design, suggesting that the church anticipated much larger inhuman beasts. It's important to note here early on that Ludwig was not the first hunter ever to combat the beasts of Yarnum, that title belongs to German, at least on the timeline we witness. Since German and Maria, for that matter, were allied with Lawrence and the other high-ranking members of the Healing Church, it would be possible to say that Ludwig being referred to as the first hunter of the church may mean that he was first of the hunters, as a title of importance, similar to how Nito is described in Dark Souls as first of the dead. By this I mean that Nito wasn't the first person ever to die, but he was the first in a hierarchy and in a position of reverence. However, it is also possible, and more likely, that he was the first officially recognised hunter of the church, while all others beforehand were more, more discreet and not known by the population of Yarnum. I argue this because of German never really being mentioned outside of the hunter's dream, and the abandoned workshop being made semi-inaccessible after the construction of the healing church workshop. Ludwig would become the hero to the people for a time, while Gehrman, the true progenitor of the hunters, would fall into relative anonymity. Most interestingly, the description of the sword mentions that the church anticipated much larger in human beasts. This is more fuel to the fire in terms of understanding the healing church as a mostly dishonest institution. Clearly they chose not to make it public knowledge that beasts like mad dogs and werewolves would eventually evolve into much more dangerous monsters. To an extension, we can assume that Ludwig knew this as well, which could be considered as abetting the deception of the Healing Church. Despite this, we can learn later that Ludwig was deceived himself in a cruel turn of events that would lead to his downfall. The description of the Sword Hunter badge reads, one of the badges crafted by the Healing Church. The Silver Sword is a symbol of a church hunter. Ludwig was the first of many Healing Church hunters to come, many of whom were clerics. As it was, clerics transformed into the most hideous beasts. This tells us that Ludwig may have volunteered to be a hunter of beasts, or was perhaps noticed beforehand for his combat experience. He may come from a family of warriors as well, but we will investigate that a bit later. What is not confirmed here, however, is whether Ludwig was a cleric of the Healing Church prior to being a hunter. Just because many of the hunters to come after Ludwig were clerics doesn't make Ludwig himself one. If he were, however, that would make his origins all the more interesting, as many clerics may have originated as Bergenworth scholars originally, as they continue the same work just to a more extreme extent. The line regarding the fact that clerics transformed into the most hideous beasts is interesting. Cleric is a term that can be applied to almost any member of the Healing Church, with the most important ones being a part of the choir, those who would act as a guiding hand of the church in Lawrence's absence. Lawrence himself, who is described as a vicar, transforms into a fiery version of a cleric beast. Could Ludwig uh, then be considered a cleric beast himself? Perhaps. The question as to why clerics were the ones who turned into the largest and most dangerous beasts is up for debate. Their constant proximity and usage of the old blood could be a contributing factor. One detail that I'd like to bring up, something that I touched on in my investigation of the Thumerians, is the topic of curses and how they relate to Ludwig. Part of the description of the defiled chalice reads, Curses are caused by inciting the anger of the Great Ones and used to hex others. 
The title of Ludwig the Accursed made me think that possibly Ludwig's beastly appearance and curse was one bestowed by the Great Ones after he angered them, possibly in relation to the Holy Moonlight Blade or by his association with the Healing Church. That's a question to which I do not have a complete answer. With that out of the way, we can continue. I'd like to push the point again that Ludwig was most likely quite public in his appearances relative to the other members of the Healing Church. I can attempt to prove this with the Chief Hunter Emblem item. It has a description that reads, A cloth emblem that belonged to the captain of the Church Hunters long ago. Opens the main gate that leads to the round plaza of the Great Cathedral. The main gate is shut tight on Knights of the Hunt, and could only be opened from the other side with this emblem. In other words, the captain's return and this emblem determined the end of the hunt. I have spoken before on the possibility of the Great Cathedral Plaza and the surrounding dwellings being of a high social class, and therefore also worthy of having the best protection during hunts in the eyes of the Healing Church. As we know, there are enormous gates that stop you from proceeding initially, and you are forced to find another way around. That is unless you have the Chief Hunter emblem. The description mentions a Captain of the Church Hunters. While Captain is a rank that is more often associated with military personnel rather than Church clergymen, I believe that the closest example of a Captain that we know is Ludwig, seeing as he trained Church Hunters himself and was the leader of his own elite unit, the Holy Blades. If we can assume that Ludwig was this mentioned captain, then I'd like you to visualize him, clothes and swords spattered in blood, moving up the stairs of the cathedral ward, waving the hunter chief emblem. This would let the resident Yarnamites know that the beasts had been driven off in another hunt, and they were safe again. They owed their lives to this man. As well as protecting the population of Yarnum, Ludwig made efforts so they could defend themselves as well. The description of the Yarnum hunter attire reads, Ludwig, the first hunter of the Healing Church, once recruited Yarnamites to serve as hunters. This hunter's attire was made for new recruits and has excellent straightforward defense. Ludwig was clearly not of the opinion that the population of Yarnum should be treated as cattle, but should be mobilized in some way. It's possible to surmise that those who perform the best as recruits may have been able to ascend to the rank of Holy Blade, though that would be more difficult to confirm. Ludwig's influence seemed to spread far and wide over time, even after his disappearance from the public eye. This can be seen in the appreciation for Ludwig's weapons becoming standard equipment for Mensa scholars, Yargle hunters, tomb prospectors, and so on. While the true memory of Ludwig has faded in Yarnum over the years, his legendary status has endured. If we look at the Radiant Sword Hunter Badge, we can get an understanding of how the Holy Blades would have been revered members of the Healing Church. The description reads, one of the badges crafted by the Healing Church, the Radiant Sword indicates the heirs to the will of Ludwig. These hunters, also known as Holy Blades, are what remains of an ancient line of heroes that date back to a very early age of honor and chivalry. This badge is much more decorative in appearance and appears to shine with radiance itself in comparison to the Sword Hunter badge. What is interesting about this description is that it refers to the Holy Blades as the remnants of a much older line of warriors that come from a time of honor and chivalry. To me, this sounds similar to European knights of the Middle Ages. Since Ludwig wields a sword, while most others seem to make use of repurposed farming tools, it'd be very difficult to ascertain who exactly made up this order of warriors, as the, as the only knightly types we seem to know about are the Canehurst knights, but there doesn't seem to be a link between Ludwig and Canehurst. These events and descriptions all help us to understand the man who Ludwig was and how he was seen during his prime, but inevitably we must discuss his downfall and the events that led up to it. Something that caught my eye early on in this investigation was that the Tomb Prospector set is unlocked at the Bath Messengers after the Sword Hunter badge is discovered, which also unlocks Ludwig's Holy Blade. While this is speculative, I believe that it is not totally out of the realm of possibility to suggest that Ludwig may have once ventured into the Chalice Dungeons at the request of the Healing Church. If this were the case, it would explain how the Holy Moonlight Blade was discovered. Let's say hypothetically for a moment that the Holy Moonlight Sword was a Thumerian relic or was at least kept a secret within the Chalice Dungeons. Remember, hypothetically. Next, let's take a look at the description of the Holy Moonlight Sword itself. It reads, 
an arcane sword discovered long ago by Ludwig. When blue moonlight dances around the sword and it channels the abyssal cosmos, its great blade will hurl a shadowy light wave. The holy moonlight sword is synonymous with Ludwig, the holy blade, but few have ever set eyes on the great blade, and whatever guidance it has to offer, it seems to be of a very private, elusive sort. As we can read here, the sword was discovered, not forged. This is quite unique, as a majority of the other weapons in Bloodborne mention them being crafted in various workshops or by groups, be it the Healing Church or Canehurst, and so on. As anyone who is a fan of the Soul series knows, the Moonlight Greatsword is in each one of the games with similar characteristics. I do not want to try and link them all together lore-wise, but I believe there is one element to the blade that is shared between Bloodborne and Dark Souls 3. And that is the apparent sentient nature of the blade, that it has a consciousness of its own. In Bloodborne, the blade grants the power of moonlight to those who have a connection with the Guidance Rune. And in Dark Souls 3, it appears that the blade only reveals itself to those who are worthy of its power. To give this theory validity, I bring your attention to part of the description of the Moonlight Greatsword from Dark Souls 3. It reads... Osiris, the consumed king, was infatuated with the search for moonlight, but in the end, it never revealed itself to him. Like its counterpart in Bloodborne, the Sword of Moonlight is elusive, and chooses to aid those who are capable of wielding such power. This is just a theory of mine, so I'd be interested in hearing what you think in the comments. What is important, as a Holy Moonlight Blade itself, is a guidance rune, an uttering of a great one etched in stone. The description reads, a carol rune discovered by the old hunter Ludwig along with the Holy Moonlight Sword. Boosts amount of life recovered by rallying. When Ludwig closed his eyes, he saw darkness, or perhaps nothingness, and that is where he discovered the tiny beings of light. Ludwig was certain that these playful dancing sprites offered guidance. They could empty Ludwig of his fears at least in the midst of a hunt. For those of you who may not know, the, the majority of the runes in Bloodborne were discovered or created by Carol of Bergenworth. The interesting element regarding the Guidance rune is that it, while it was referred to as a Carol rune, it was actually discovered by Ludwig himself, along with the blade. What the description tells us is that the rune allowed Ludwig to see tiny beings of light in the darkness when he closed his eyes, and that they offered guidance and possibly courage to him. They seemingly allowed Ludwig to fear nothing during a hunt. Since the rune boosts rallying potential, it makes sense as Ludwig would have been able to move back into battle quickly if he were wounded. Interestingly, a carrion crow drops a weaker version of the guidance rune at the top level of the research hall. In the guidebooks for the game, it is said that there is a third, more powerful guidance rune, but to my knowledge this one has never been found, and may be a light joke to the players that we are not worthy to view the private elusive sprites that Ludwig so revered. Whatever the case, these additions to Ludwig's already powerful arsenal would have no doubt allowed him to fight harder and longer, vanquishing beasts of any size. However, as we know, the Hunter's Nightmare is a purgatory for blood-drunk hunters, and has trapped normal hunters, executioners, and church hunters as well. Ludwig is found among them, in a pool of blood surrounded by corpses. Something I realised during this investigation is that Ludwig's boss area, and the Hunter's Nightmare in general, bear a fascinating resemblance to the Third Circle of Hell, described in Dante Alighieri's Inferno, in a description of which I will read to you now. In the third circle, you'll find yourself amidst eternal rain, maledict, cold, and heavy. The gluttons are punished here, lying in the filthy mixture of shadows and of putrid water. Before you consumed in excess, you meet your fate beneath the cold, dirty rain, amidst the other souls that there lie unhappily in the stinking mud. Cerberus, a canine monster, cruel and uncouth, with three heads and red eyes, dwells in this level. He growls and tears at the damned with his teeth and claws. Seeing as we find the punished and undying remnants of men in a pool of blood, guarded by a multi-headed beast, in a world designed to punish the bloodthirsty, I believe this comparison is quite apt. In truth, however, Ludwig should perhaps be among the sufferers, as he is probably guilty of bloodthirstiness, just as much as any other hunter. 
Ludwig the Accursed rules this domain as a mindless monster, merged with the beastly physicality of a horse. It is interesting that Ludwig appears to have eyes lining the inside of his other neck, which harks back to something mentioned in the description of the one-third umbilical cord, specifically the concept of having eyes on the inside. Another interesting factor is that Ludwig's beastly form is that of a horse. Considering that most other beasts seem to be have a wolf or canine-like appearance, Ludwig's is unique. I think it's worth noting that Yarnamites seem to have kept domesticated dogs as hunting companions, as well as hunters themselves, so perhaps Ludwig rode a horse during hunts, and his body fused with that of his noble steed. It's impossible to confirm, obviously, but I thought I'd put it out there nonetheless. Halfway through the fight with Ludwig, he collapses, and suddenly, briefly, his humanity returns to him as his eyes settle upon his former battle companion, the Moonlight Blade. It is then when we hear the voice of this once legendary warrior. <laughs> Ah, you were at my side all along. My true mentor, my guiding moonlight. I just thought I'd let that play out just because of how amazing it is. Anyway, let's continue. The sprites of the Guidance Rune seem to reveal themselves to Ludwig for a final time, urging him to fight on despite his injuries to earn his death. Ludwig stands as best he can to resemble his once human form and wields his legendary blade. It is only now when we get a small insight into the man that Ludwig once was, a warrior that would inspire countless others to pick up arms against the beastly scourge. Despite Ludwig's efforts, however, the pale blood hunter eventually fells the mighty beast, and only his head remains to speak with. There are several dialogue options which we can use with Ludwig. If you approach him without wearing any garb of the healing church, he says the following to you. Good hunter. Have you seen the thread of light? Just a hair, a fleeting thing. Yet I clung to it, steeped as I was in the stench of blood and beasts. I never wanted to know what it really was. Really, I didn't. He will then proceed to wail and howl loudly until you kill him, or speak to him while wearing church hunter attire. Presumably the thread of light that Ludwig is referring to is the figure displayed on the Guidance Rune, though that can be debated. It could be argued as well that the Guidance Rune resembles the Moon Presence, for instance. Anyway, Ludwig explains that he held onto the, the light even in the midst of hunts as it gave him strength. However, he also states that he was ignorant towards the true nature of the thread of light, implying that he did, know, did not know its true motivations. And as we will find out from Simon's dialogue, it may have led him astray, which we will get to shortly. Alternatively, if we speak to Ludwig while wearing some kind of healing church clothing, Ludwig greets us differently, saying... Tell me, good hunter of the church, have you seen the light? Are my church hunters the honourable Spartans? I hoped they would be. To me, this confirms that Ludwig did not only recruit healing church hunters, but also trained them as well. Not only did he train them, but he also hoped that they would be proud warriors, not just distractions and fodder for the beasts. This separates Ludwig quite distinctly from the other healing church operatives who seem to be more self-interested or rather more interested in the greater good. 
You have the option to answer Ludwig with a yes or no in regard to his question regarding his honourable Spartans. He states the following if you tell him yes. Ah, good. That is a relief. To know I did not suffer such denigration for nothing. Thank you kindly. Now I may sleep in peace. Even in this darkest of nights, I see the moonlight. Denigration means to speak damagely of someone, so from this we can surmise that perhaps Ludwig was criticised by his fellow hunters, or by members of the healing church for his methods, or perhaps his emerging beasthood. I say this because of what Ludwig says if you tell him that his hunters were not honourable. He then states, Oh my, just as I feared, then a beast-possessed degenerate was I as my detractors made eminently clear. Does the nightmare never end? This dialogue helps us understand that Ludwig may have begun his transformation into a beast before he ceased being a hunter. If Ludwig had detractors, essentially critics, then some sort of order must have still been present to be criticised. I think it's worth noting that during the fight with Ludwig, he still wears the holy shawl on his back, a clothing detail present in all healing church garb. Perhaps that is a sign that Ludwig wore his uniform until his total loss of sanity. It seems that despite Ludwig's downfall, the best elements of his leadership and mastery of combat have endured. I think it's fitting to close off with Simon's thoughts on Ludwig, who was found by the severed head after the fight. Oh, he's well and truly gone now. A tragic figure. But he will shame himself no longer. He died with his ideals untarnished. He was a true hero, and earned that much at least. Here. This is Ludwig's guiding light, the blinding thread that led and misled that consummate hero, the poor brute. I think that will do us for this week. I found Ludwig a fascinating character to investigate, and I hope you enjoyed this video. For those Dark Souls fans out there, I have already been compiling my thoughts on the upcoming DLC so I can begin forming my thoughts quickly. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as some great content will be released over the coming weeks. Until next time.